Hi, my name is Grace Shalom Hopkins and welcome to another episode of Spin Weekly. Today, Bean and I are discussing gradient by weight and not by color. And we've implemented it using art yarn. So stay tuned. Okay, so um, first of all, Bean is joining us in her gorgeous new outfit here. It is a Lenny Lamb Carrier, hashtag not sponsored. Uh, I'm really, really, really small, 85 pounds and five foot. So like if you ever see a 12 year old blonde wandering around in your local yarn store looking excited, that might be me. But <laughs> um, the moral of that story is it's really hard for me to find a soft structured carrier that fits. So I ordered this one from Poland because Lenny Lamb is Polish and it is hand woven. And I tell all of you this, not just because Bean will be in the picture, but also nicely contained based on last week's experience. <laughs> but because I thought you guys would appreciate the handwoven aspect. So that's my bunny trail. On to the content. Today we are exploring some semi-solid blended top. This is the Virgo? Virgo. Okay, so I think it's Virgo or maybe Leo or something, astronomy, from the August Paradise Fiber of the Month Club. I will leave it down below. I don't remember what it is. Um, and it is a semi-solid Merino Tessa blend. And this is what it looks like once it was spun. So I spun this part a worsted weight two ply it's very lovely um, and I kind of use that as a control so you can see what it looks like by itself also um, because as per usual I'm planning on weaving this yarn um, I think it would be a really cool accent yarn in the maybe beginning and the end of the gradient perhaps mm. I don't know or maybe I'll just use it somewhere completely different who knows so that's not really the exciting part of this adventure um, I really like that it's Definitely not overspun. It's very fluffy. Overall, yeah. Again, not really notable. But interesting if you're kind of trying to gauge what a blended top semi-solid might look like. So I did kind of include this little walkthrough. The main event is a gradient arranged by weight. One of you lovely viewers, Grace, fantastic name by the way, sent me a package of these things. They're called fiber crumbs from Curly Fur. Again, always links down below to that. And they're little like, here's one, little Rolag guys. And they come in packages of different types of colors. So there's a neutrals and a pastel and a bright and a fancy and a regular. Perhaps not regular, but definitely the others. And so they're just little roll eggs of different types of fiber. So initially I wanted to make a gradient and intersperse the texture of the fancy fibers, which were some sparkle and some silks and some mohair locks and things like that. But as I arranged the gradient, it went really poorly. So <laughs> I didn't like the way it looked. So I went and I pulled out my secret weapon, which is color by weight. And I'm really excited to walk you through how I did this in the video. But just before we go in, let me give you kind of the premise of color by weight. When you take a black and white photograph, you see the weight of the color, not the color of the color. I'm using layman's terms here. Um, so when you arrange a gradient by color, you, are gonna notice that it maybe isn't perfect because there are all different weights of fiber involved. But if you arrange it by weight first and then by color, you're gonna find that magically shades that you didn't think went together totally go together and they flow. So I recommend anytime you're trying to match colors for color work or dyeing or anything like that, you use color by weight. 
Okay, so before we jump into the uh, voiceover part of this video where I really demonstrate and explain what I'm doing, I want to explain a little bit of what I'm going for here. So when you arrange a gradient by color, it might look like this. If you arrange a gradient by color and then you take a black and white photograph, it'll look like this. You can see there are dark and light spots everywhere. It's pretty nutty. And you might notice that's pretty disjointed, that color gradient. It doesn't look bright. So then what you can do if this is happening to you is you switch off your brain's processing of the color. Completely ignore the color and arrange things by weight. When you arrange things by weight, you are approaching it from a completely different perspective. So what this means, essentially in layman's terms, is taking a black and white view and arranging things from darkest to lightest. So this is really handy if you're mobile, if you can look through your mobile screen and take a black and white like video. So when we walk into the voiceover, you will kind of know what's happening. We are arranging by the darkest in black and white to the lightest by black and white. And then once that's finished, we can tweak by color. This method is applicable for color work, uh, wardrobe planning, quilting, coloring, any, time where you need to coordinate colors, this is really a great method, especially when you're working with several different colors and you want something maybe out of the ordinary or you have a set palette and you need to know how to arrange it in an aesthetically pleasing way like I did. So all that said, let's jump into the voiceover and I'll meet you on the other ah. side. Bye! Okay, so this is how I originally arranged the gradient by color. I didn't go too crazy with arranging each color progressively, so like every same shade of green next to, you know what I mean, from lightest to darkest, because I wasn't sure what I was trying to achieve there. So I was really dissatisfied, so I took a black and white photograph, and that's what you see there. And you can see the weight is really different across the board. So some colors are really dark and some colors are really light and they're not next to each other in a progression when you look at it black and white. This is called weight, color weight. So I wanted to do a gradient by weight. And what that means is I was able to mix the yellows and the greens and the blues all together and that created a harmonious flow by color but we'll talk about that again when I finish. So right here you're watching me and I'm just by eye picking out the things that I think are going to be the darkest and then taking a black and white photograph of them and then arranging them from lightest to darkest. Now I'm mixing the greens and the yellows and the blues all together. So just to reiterate, we're not focusing on the color at all. We're only focused on the weight. So whether it's light or dark, and you can see through my phone here, how I'm doing this. On some phones, my old phone, I could just switch the camera to black and white and use it like a viewfinder, but this one I can't. Uh, so that made it a little inconvenient, but in general, anyone with a mobile phone can do this really easily. So you can already see that we're starting to move some greens in there. Now yellows just naturally have a lighter weight than the other two colors, so they won't show up until the mid zone. So I'm just going to continue to do this and here are some of the black and white photographs that I took during my process just so you can kind of see what it was like, you know, how I, how I did that. I, I have a headache so my wording is a little bit fucky here but I think the pictures and the videos really speak for themselves. So here I'm just doing the final touch. Once you've arranged it by weight, 
you're going to notice that there are large swaths of color that are very light or very dark or very medium. So there's play within that particular weight. So within the lightest weight, I'm going and I'm mixing them around. So that way I don't have like three puffs of the same color next to each other because an entire line has uh, the same weight. So you can see that more closely there. That way you have some play room to arrange it by color. But again, weight trumps color. And when you are focused on weight trumping color, you're gonna get a really smooth, organic, I feel like it's almost an impressionistic view. So here you can see it, what it looks like. And then I added all of that sparkle and bling again by weight. So some of the locks are heavier than others. And then you can see in black and white, I still maintained that weight gradient. So here we are spinning the Paradise Fiber Merino Tessa Blended Top. It's a semi-solid, like I said in the introduction. And again, you can find the name of this in the links below, but I got it in my Paradise Fiber of the Month Club, which I will also link that unboxing video down below. I'm just doing a worsted weight, and at first I spun it across the top, but later on I switched to stripping it down in small pieces so I broke off like a six inch chunk and then strip it into small pieces and then spun those into it. Um, I specifically was uh, random about it because I wanted to maintain the semi-solid effect without getting too pooly because in my opinion the only thing worse than pooling in regular colorways is semi-solid pooling so not cool. So I'm going to go ahead and let you listen to music while I finish this portion. my bobbin of the multicolored bits. Um, again, these are the bat crumbs and I will leave them in the description below, well rather the link to them. I wish I could leave a bag of them for you, but time space continuum is so pesky. Anyhow, I'm spinning them end to end. Um, the Angelina, I'm just kind of plopping in as I go. Um, Angeline is always really messy for me to spin. I feel like I have to work hard to get it to consistently go through unless it's been really, like, combed or carded into something. To get the future, I'll do a video on, uh, properly dispersing your sparkly stuff because I have a pet peeve about that. I want it to be finely distributed through everything, no chunks of it, because then I think it pools. And as noted, Pooling is not my favorite. That's a whole different little soapbox. <laughs> See, I'm picking it off my dress. Yeah. So basically, I am doing a worsted weight. Um, there are some thin spots. There are some thick spots. Uh, I specifically am trying to go for kind of an art yarn and letting the fiber spin as it wants to. So some little puffs like that one you just watched uh, spin really smoothly, and other ones... Uh, are a little bit more lumpy bumpy and don't draft as easily and I didn't fight that at all I let the fiber itself speak and I feel like my favorite spins are when that happens one of the things that makes me love prep so much is when you prep it oh hold on let's talk about these lines real quick so I flooped it out and then I attached it and then added the next puff so it's over that seam line and that's how I did my lock attachment integration spinning I don't know the word I'm looking for <laughs> that's how I did the locks um, and I was saying something about prep oh if you prep it correctly and 
then you can just let the fiber speak to you as you spin. I don't like to do basically anything other than autopilot spinning. The spinning itself, I want it to be really smooth and intuitive, but that's just me. Um, also, you see the bottom of my new baby carrier, so that was incredible. That revolutionized my spinning experience. Anyhow, I am going to stop rambling and turn on some music. Oh, you can see me trying to add that Angelina here. Ah, it's just as obnoxious watching it as it was trying to do that. I love the result. I really love the result, which is why I continue to do it, but it does drive me nuts. <laughs> so anyway, I'm going to turn on some music and let you watch me finish up these singles, and then we'll pop back in for the plying portion. center pole ball as usual and then I'm going to do a regular two ply. I am the only variation on normal for this two ply that I'm going to do is the lock integration. So when I'm finished rolling oh you can see oh I'm also kind of trying to facilitate a spiral ply because the semi solid is really consistent and the gradient portion isn't. So I wanted to see if I could push as much 
extra texture in as possible and facilitate a spiral pie. And in most places it worked out really well. And I just really love it. And just watching this clip is so satisfying. Spiral ply is one of my favorite ways to work with art yarn. Um, a lot of people are shy about super textured art yarns because they get to be so bulky and they're expensive to create because you get very little yardage from huge amounts of fiber. Whereas I feel like you can do all of the same techniques and textures on a smaller scale so you're not sacrificing any texture, you're just doing it smaller. So you get more yardage and it's more suitable for uh, a wide variety of projects. So that's kind of my perspective on art yarns and you can see that really coming out in this one. spun in the block. I did a coil spin and then I went back to spiral spinning. Spiral planning. Slightly out of focus but I think you can see what I'm doing here. I'm gonna come across another one here in a second and then I'll be able to show you one more time. So there we go. I'm gonna hold it at a 90 degree angle to get a coil and then I go back to spiral plane. Um, and then at the end I did have some leftover of the semi-solid after I'd been through all of the gradient and I just spun that regular two-ply and then I think I'll be able to use that within the project that I used the other yarn as kind of an anchoring weight. One of the things I love to do with art yarn is anchor it with a coordinating smooth yarn. I think that really makes the texture pop. Okay, so we have finished our yarn. I really love how it looks. Hopefully you are seeing photos right now of this yarn. It is a DK weight with uh, ploofs of texture. So as I told you in the voiceover, <coughs> bless you, I didn't try and modify the texture in any way. I actually spun it specifically so it was locky and then I beehived it when I hit those. So they're pops of texture. I think this is really beautiful. I can't wait to see it woven up. Right now I'm kind of imagining the flame sample. You wanna look at yourself? Right now I'm imagining the plain piece at the bottom and the top and then that in the middle with like maybe a navy warp. I think that would be really nice. Yeah, is that your thoughts? Mm -hmm. All right, I hope you enjoyed this video and... No, we need to talk now. I hope you enjoyed this video and have learned so much about approaching color in a unique way. If you use this method or any other interesting offbeat method for color, let me know in the comment section down below. Okay, this episode is brought to you by our patrons on Patreon, but also our friend Grace. So. 
If you are interested in supporting this show financially or being a greater part of the emotional aspect of all of these episodes and getting cool thank you swag in return, check that out below. Also, check out my Instagram. I'm updating people on the physical book roving so i have a digital book roving i have five digital books actually um and i am releasing it in physical form the baby almost fell off the couch there <laughs> and i'm updating all of you guys on that progress on instagram which is links down below so if you liked this video hit the like button i'm just gonna leave this in here because this is real life here uh, oh, and the air conditioner went on. My husband's teeth got removed, three of them, and there has been projectile vomiting, and it's just crazy. So the baby's feeling the emotional sad. <laughs> but if you like your fiber with a side of domestic shenanigans, this is definitely the place to be. I am not aware of any other domestic fiber shenanigan channel. <laughs> Hit the subscribe button. Join the family. I will see you next week. Hopefully with more shenanigans but less projectile vomiting. <laughs>